All right. Looks like we are live. Hexit, hello, hello. This time you're not hungry? No pizza tonight? <laughs> Let me know how the sound is. Let me know how every, everything looks. And we will dive right in. If you're watching this after the fact, feel free to fast forward a little bit. Or a lot of it. Whatever the hell you want. And let's uh, take a look at the teams. Hopefully it looks good. Awesome. All right. Well, let's see who uh, we've got playing here today. We've got Valis as the Persians in green. That should be fun. Target as the Lithuanians in gray. In the other pockets, the Sleepy Swede as the Italians. And Turs as the Armenian. Thukang 1994. Yeah, let's go. Let's see some fun games tonight. Although, generally, these uh, four on fours seem to be pretty damn fun. A Bunzu Halt as the Bohemians in orange. Rudely Great. Okay, I always like that guy's name because I, I don't know if it's Rudely Great or Greatly Rude. As one of my favorites, the Saracens in blue. Kylar as the Malay. Samero as the Goths in a red rounding out. So we got the Goths taking on the Persians. <laughs> Good luck to you, Mr. Goth. And then we've got the Armenians facing off against the Bohemians. Ooh, does uh, the composite Bowman doesn't ignore the armor of a Hussite wagon, right? I don't, because technically that is a siege unit. Right? I, I I might be might be making things up here, but the composite bowman ignores all the armor of land-based non-siege units. And if we're lucky enough to see a bunch of uh, all the uh, out of the Bohemians, generally you don't see a lot of Hussite wagons out of the Bohemians in Rage Forest. They tend to go heavy on the Hufnitzas. I'm killing it. I appreciate that, Thu Kang. Thank you so much. I try to make it never a dull moment. Hexit throwing his weight behind Team Valis here, whose deer, by the way, have been lamed. And I'm assuming Valis is now going to go just about as ape shit as possible, seeing that his food supply has been uh, hurt. I like that all his resources are kind of lined up in a column here. This is about as amazing for a town center as you can get, including this little uh, soul patch of forest here. This is about as amazing as you can get here. One town center, two town centers, maybe three once he gets rid of the berries. Anyway, let's take a look at the map as our Armenian loses a villager, does manage to take out the Bohemian scout, though. Might want to bring his scout along for the ride. They are so well placed. It's always uh, this is like a game for people like me who have like OCD, OCP. It's such a fun game sometimes when they line up like this. <laughs> Let's take a look at the map because it is a very simple map today. We've got one avenue of attack to the north, a bit of a west, east, east, west corridor, and one avenue of attack to the south. We're speaking of resource placements. How sour is this that our Armenian has his primary gold so far forward? That is yuckety yuck. How's everyone doing today? I'm hoping a little bit better than these villagers who are uh, trying to kill each other. Although at the end of the day, it doesn't look like anyone has died yet. Oh, never mind. One bohemian villager bites the dust. They're not done yet. What are you doing here? Ooh, we've got our first boar pole here by the goth. It is a very much one of the cleanest rage forests we've seen. Now, what, usually, no, we, we've seen some like pretty simple ones usually when it's a map like this i put it to you guys about the center we do a bit of a rorschach test Ooh, okay now remember the goths with their hunters those hunters are stronger so they kill the boars quicker you need fewer villagers to kill boars they also i think carry more and the hunt lasts longer whatever the hell that means in uh, Age of Empires parlance. I don't know if there's 15% more meat on the board. And here we go. This is why you can't have individual trees as part of your wall off. You just can't. Parth, thank you so much. 
Tonight we're doing some 4v4s, but yeah, 1v1s are always fun. Always fun. So uh, let's do a little bit of a Rorschach test. What does this center forest look like to you? To me, it looks like a turtle that got flattened. Here's the head, the two feet, the two arms. <laughs> More boars are biting the dust. Has anyone snuck any villagers, anything behind enemy lines? A man eating a burger? <laughs> I knew it would be food related. I still haven't had dinner, so once this cast is over, maybe even before this cast is over, my Uber Eats app will be opening, my fingers will be clicking, and my calorie count will quadruple. Reverie, nice to see you. Thanks for all the awesome comments. Oh, you see uh, Admiral Akbar, I believe, is the uh, one from Star Wars. It's a trap! I'm trying to think. Does it look like Admiral Akbar? Hmm. Target pulling them boars. Target, one of my most popular shorts was him doing an absolute chaotic, chaotic boar pull. Yeah, that one from Star Wars. The one that looks like a, like a Zoidberg from Futurama. It looks like a, like a, like a lobster crustacean creature. <laughs> I think that's Admiral Akbar, if I'm not mistaken, was his name. In the uh, in the movie. All right, more and more boar pulls. Somebody, please pull six. Try, try. The sleepy Swede, not so sleepy now, helping his teammate as more and more players head over to feudal age. Oh, Hexed, I know. I saw. You know, I I cast it the day it was played knowing well not knowing because i'm obviously i don't want to like you know i don't want to sound full of myself suspecting let's put it like that suspecting that other people would be casting that especially Hera and especially t90 and i think i released it a day after Hera, but like an hour before t90 because i think my videos come out maybe an hour or two earlier than his oh my god two volleys out of so many villagers needed to kill that boar but uh, I'm glad that I cast it anyway, just because it's, uh, you know, when you when you watch it on Hera's channel or I didn't see it on T90s. Was his also in Capture Age or was it his from his perspective? Because, for example, Hera, when he pl when he posted it on his channel, it was from his perspective, which is all. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, <laughs> the, the perspective of the best player in the world is not exactly uh, something to be taken lightly, but it is still just one person's perspective. I, I didn't see T90's cast of it. I don't know if it was his own perspective or if he cast the game after the fact and kind of provided commentary on what Hera was doing as well. So I tried to give both sides, but I, I you know, when games like that happen, there's another game that I cast with Hera and Huang, and I'm absolutely shocked that no one else, uh, at least no one else that I'm aware of was cast that game. T90 was capture age as well? Okay, yeah, makes sense. I'm glad I caught that one. Yeah, we all kind of released it at the same time. Everyone uh, having fun. I mean, yeah, again, T90 is really freaking good. <laughs> I made the comment during the video that uh, you guys uh, during the live streams have always uh, made a joke or maybe a, a, a wish expressed the desire that we have some kind of caster tournament. After seeing T90 play like that, <laughs> yeah, tell me about it, Hexit. I, I'm i not entering into any of those kinds of tournaments until I get like at least a year of gameplay underneath my belt and then maybe I won't embarrass myself. There's a difference between casting a game, knowing the game, having opinions about a game, and then having your arthritic 40 year old fingers click the keyboard at the speed that some of these players click. But no, I mean, I know, I, I know that Hera was doing his uh, off meta, which is why I think he opened up with the infantry, heavy infantry, although slab infantry is not exactly super duper off meta. Maybe in the early game, will he get the attack rounds? No, he misses. Six second cooldown, the scout moves in. 
Okay, our Malay sees the Spearman, decides not to risk it. And now we've got a spy behind enemy lines. Somebody wrote in the comments in that game between Hera and T90 that Hera was kind of just like half-assing it, having a good time, relaxing. And then he realized, wait a second, T90 is pretty damn good. I might lose this. And then started uh, playing in earnest. Oh, look at that micro out of Kylar, but does lose his villager. Look at them. Leg, arm rather, between the horse's legs. I'm a little surprised that no one's managed to sneak in any kind of villagers behind enemy lines here. I'm looking around the map. There's no teal, there's no green, there's no gray or purple. I have high hopes out of Valus this game. Valus is always down and he's always good for building massive, massive armies. And when you give a player as good as he is in Rage Force, and I think he's the best Rage Force player in the world, the Persians. And then you give him time and opportunity and space, just like he has now. Oh man, I'm expecting a 5,000 Savars, or maybe even elephants. Try harding. That's his Thursday uh, content, right? Try hard Thursdays. What's Hera? Hera is uh, off meta Mondays, team game Tuesdays, watching Wednesdays, and I think try hard Thursdays. And then I'm not sure if he streams on Friday. There are 17 people watching this. Somebody must know what Hera's uh, schedule is like. Now that I'm talking about days of the week, I'm reminded of uh, when I was younger and I was always going to Subway for uh, for their specials, their daily specials. Always go Wednesday for the chicken breast. Friday for the uh, tuna, Sunday for the chicken teriyaki. It looks like Valis is laying siege to our goth town center, which is very forward place, by the way, but with wood, gold, and stone, can you blame our goth? This is also a perfect location for town centers. And interesting that our Persian, by the way, is staying on one town center. So he is investing all of his wood into siege right now. Scorpions. Mangonels, okay. Not, uh, I, I would not have called that, but there you go. We've got a fortified church for our Armenian, the first, I believe, which means it does come with a free relic inside. It must be really awesome if you're playing as the Lithuanians as Target is to have an Armenian teammate who gets a relic for free. Target needs to send us a uh, monk here and then say, pretty, pretty, please, sir. May I have this relic? And uh, Turs needs to take that relic out and give it to him. Okay, second town center is going up. The push into the base is continuing. Our Malay has built some infrastructure. He is in Castle Age. His elephants are 30% off. So they can absolutely overwhelm this uh, small Persian force, if not for the presence of one, maybe two monks somewhere. Myra, hello, hello. How is everyone doing tonight, by the way? Ooh, attack round. Actually, that looked like an attack round. But it didn't actually damage his own uh, villagers there. Okay, this might be a, a very short game if our goth and our Malay don't get their asses in line here. What is our goth doing? He's got one scout. This is the entire Gothic army, and down it goes to some well-placed attack rounds. Our Lithuanian is joining the battle with eight villagers. So a castle forward means we're going to get to see a bunch of Lechai, which is never, ever, ever a bad thing. Jesus Christopher 82 with the mushroom and the cross. Okay. Reverie. With the average elo in these games uh i want to say the average elo is probably like 1900 to 2000. uh-oh uh-oh that's one way to get rid of some siege just throw some cheap light cab at it oh you you watched today's video i have never seen someone do a tootin tower rush the way mr yo did it in today's video I was so happy to see that. 
It's one of my pet peeves when, uh, when, when people, players, when players don't use the features of units or civilizations to their full capacity, to their maximum. Obviously easy for me, is, you know, sitting here in my shorts with my can of Diet Pepsi, stress-free, talking about what players should and should do, but, you know, oh, what can I do? Got my opinions. Uh, I do not cast low elo games. I may start. I'm going to put up a poll, by the way, in the, um, as the channel grows, it's almost at 6,500 subscribers, which is, uh, to me, it's pretty mind-boggling. I'm going to put a poll up on the uh, community tab to see what kind of content you guys have, want, because I have a few cool ideas for some content. <laughs> I'm going to spam some Wololo. Is that what the mushroom in the, uh, the cross is? Am I, am I not caught up on my Age of Empires lingo? Yeah, Myra, that's honestly one of the reasons that I really love casting ranked ladder games versus tournaments is that the players just try random shit. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, we are heading a lot of people balancing their economy here on the left side of our screen. There's a lot of Lithuanian monks. Uh, Lithuanian, Armenian. I wasn't aware that the Armenian monk was really that powerful. Oh, he converts one but loses another. What is happening here? Ah. <laughs> oh my god, but he manages to steal. I, this is incredible. Monks converting monks. What is happening? Now he's converting a villager back to the north. The goth finally has some semblance of a defense here. A few rams, a petard being trained. But Lechai are about to pop out. Oh, Petard blew up here. We've got our uh, couple of, uh, rather one, Malay battle elephant. I want to see, sorry to pan away from the action, our Lithuanian. He's got one relic, he's got to beg. He's got to ask the Armenian to give him this freaking relic. Because I don't see a lot of relics on the map. And a plus one attack for the Lithuanian doesn't even give them Blast Furnace, which they're missing. You need at least two. Uh-oh, he's not paying attention. The Goth, the Goth is here. But Lechai versus Pikeman. Pikeman disappear in the blink of an eye. Monkception. <laughs> that's true. That, that's a clever one. They were converting the shit out of each other. And they get, they're continuing. Will he get any of them? Will he get any of them? They're not the quickest moving units. One orange becomes teal. Two orange become two teal. He gets all three. Amazing get there by our Armenian. Again, I wasn't aware that our the Armenians had a monk line that was viable. Oh, Easter Cross. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you said Wololo. I thought it was uh, the monk. Some kind of slang for the monk. Yeah, he was, he was a uh, spy monk. So Valus cleared the way with his mangonels. And now our Lithuanian is hitting hard. Valus is still in Castle Age. What are his resources like? Terrible resources. A few basic Castle Age siege units. And it's really our pocket Lithuanian who is putting on all the pressure. His Lechai are at what? Plus four. So he's managed to get two more relics. Or rather, one more relic for two. This attack is not go going to accomplish much if he clumps these rams. He's got to declump. Make sure Valus can't kill multiple of them at once. Oh, but that's a that's a failed doom to push, and our goth knows that he retreats. Bear says, you're not building no houses in my territory. I saw an ad on uh, YouTube. Oh my god, he killed the villager! What the hell happened? Does our Saracen not have loom? Oh my god, our Saracen doesn't have loom. <laughs> the bear got him. I saw an ad, by the way, for... Uh... Oh my god, the bears are all of a sudden going bonkers on the map. I saw an ad for um, the new Winnie the Pooh horror movie. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh blood and something. 
Broken Richards from our Saracen. I mean, you have one of the hardest hitting civilizations in the game and you are training skirmishers. Arbalest as well. I don't see a single monk with Bimaristan. Blachai, are, are they still at a plus four? No, they're at a plus five. So he's managed to get three relics. And here we go. Let's see it. Cheap as shit. Goth Pikeman versus one of the strongest cavalry units in the game. I, I mean, do you see a single dead latest? I see one, two, two Leichai in exchange for that entire army. The absolute brutality that is armor ignoring units. Visbot, hello, good afternoon. Our goth is still a minute away from Imperial. Team East is being pushed into to the north, to the south. They are pushing in. Armenian is collapsing. What is our... Italian bringing along for the ride his cheaper gunpowder units. Okay. But they're trying to get converted here. Bohemian monks is he... Oh, there's the Hafnitsa. I knew we wouldn't see. It's a shame you don't see a lot of Hussite wagon in uh, Rage Forest. He is an Imperial. I didn't notice if our Bohemian research Hussite reforms to make his monks trash units. Uh, purple. Purple focus on the monks. What is happening? We've got skirmishers and monks versus skirmishers and monks. A confused donkey in the middle of all of this. Oh, he dies. Oh, to add insult to injury, the Treb then fires on his dead body. Uh, I had huge expectations for Valus, and he's getting Commander in. <laughs> Why is he getting Commander in? Why the hell is he going Commander in? You are under no pressure. You have resources. Go Savar. Go Elephant. Community games are going to be happening soon, I hope. My uh, little one had a cold this week. I mean, he still has a cold, so it's been a bit rough in terms of finding time. But uh, I think the poll has netted at least 10 answers. And so that's what I was looking for. I wanted to have uh, at least 10 people answer. So that eight of them, in case if you didn't want to participate afterwards or couldn't. But we will organize something now. It'll either be a, a Rage Forest. I, I'll let you guys choose the map. Maybe I'll create like a subgroup in uh, in uh, Discord. By the way, holy shit, 72 kills. Our goth. Our goth just lost 61 villagers to these Leichai. Holy shit. That is a lot of dead villagers. Silk Road for our Italian. Man, are the Italians a uh, underperforming Civ sometimes. In comes our Saracen. Now we're going up to 55 Arbalests. Does he have counterweights? No, he does not. Does he really need it, though, with Hafnitzas here? How many Hafnitzas? Ten! And a whole bunch of monks. He must have got Hussite reforms. I didn't notice, but he must have. I still don't know why Valus is going Commander and Crossbows. What the hell is the point of this? Especially against the Goths. Who are, oh, unfortunately spamming Halberd ears. Not... Did he not have time to research Anarchy? Before he got dislodged from his base? Thank you, Hexit. He's getting better. At first, I thought he just had like a little runny nose, but then the runny nose lasted for a little while. And then I was like, huh. My wife is like, no, he's got a cold. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Our Armenian has been dislodged. Our goth has been dislodged. Val is continuing with his inexplicable Castle Age army of crossbows. Okay, he's mixed in a few hand cannoneers, which will kill all of this infantry. Lithuanian trying to bust his way in here, but finally our Malay, where have you been? Yep. Perfusion for the goth barracks. He needs it ASAP. That's going to make these barracks, if he has conscription, work three times faster. Now he's getting conscription afterwards. And then anarchy. Ooh, I would have maybe researched anarchy first. Start spamming those husk girls. Although not that he has the gold. He's got 50 gold in the bank. This is such a badass army. Look at this. Saracen Siege, Bohemian Siege, 
bohemian monks, Saracen Arbalests. Not a single Saracen monk, though. One monk, by the way, can heal all of these units. Except for the Bombards, of course. Thanos! Hello, hello! Oh, yeah, we're about to see some Condottieri try to take on this Saracen Bohemian army. Let's see if their attack bonus is against Gunpowder. What are their stats like? What are we working with? Five Pierce Armor. So not exactly the scariest of armies. And they melt. <laughs> oh, my God. Citadels for our Persian who is going to be pushing in with a castle, I guess. Oh, mama. That's a lot of halberdiers, 78 of them. But what the hell are halberdiers going to do against hand cannoneers, crossbows? Even Leichai are going to have a field day with them. This is the funny part. These Leichai up here, six of them have 15 kills. And then you have these Leichai, 39 of them have four kills. Fresh recruits, virgins. I love the Condottiero. I wish it was a bit of a, a better unit. But I guess it's kind of purpose-built to take on gunpowder. Unfortunately, there was no gunpowder here, and they just all freaking died. But yeah, look at look at these fancy, fancy schmancy unit. Although he is a he is Italian, so you gotta you gotta take some fashion into account. Man, I when I when I was in Rome, uh, like ten years ago. I felt so underdressed. Okay, not enough goth infantry, but here we go. The Huskarls are coming in. There are hand cannoneers that are going to have an attack bonus against them. I felt so underdressed in Rome. I, I'm more of a comfort guy. I walk around in sweatpants if I can and shorts. Yeah, <laughs> exit. It always happens. It's always the yin yang of Rage Forest. Now our Malay is being pressed into. His economy is being gutted. Our Goth has replaced his barracks. Remember, with Perfusion, Conscription, and these 14 barracks are going to be as good as 30, uh, 42 barracks, actually. They work three times faster. Malay Battle Elephant's fully upgraded. I bet he wishes he had a few more armor upgrades, but nah, -uh, that's not how your bonus works. Ooh, this is very clumped up. Does no one does no one here have siege? Does our Italian not have siege? Does our Lithuanian not have siege? Our Lithuanian is a little bit too busy up north. Our Armenian, by the way, has taken over the Goth space. The Goth would do well to come here and take over the Armenian base. Oh, for sure they're just posers. Of course they're posers, but they're still dressed so nicely. I felt so underdressed. But I didn't give a shit. I was walking around. I was eating my pizza, having my wine. I think I told the story last time of uh, playing chess at like in some random piazza. Ooh, the pizzas have to be careful. There is one villager repairing, two villagers repairing. But archer units are gonna kill, but not kill quickly. And it looks like the Condottieri are catching some reinforcements. Our Armenian net needs to get his butt in the game. Even the Goth, knocked down as he is, still has 90 army supply. How the hell does our Goth still have 90 army supply? He's got no town centers. Somebody must be sending Red a lot of resources. He needs Huskarls ASAP. Yeah, Rome is gorgeous. You know my favorite thing about Rome? Not the food, not the, uh, not the vino, not all that stuff. You walk up on a random street and there's just these massive doors. And you're thinking like, okay, just like it's like a house or a store or something, a small church. You open the doors, you walk inside, and it's one of the most gorgeous churches you've ever seen in your life. Or it's one of the most gorgeous galleries or one of the most gorgeous anything you've seen in your life. All just hidden behind some nondescript old door. Uh-oh, Valis is being pushed back here, but he's got Citadel Castles. They're firing those bullets. They have bonus damage versus infantry, plus three. 
but I don't think our goth cares. I think this is a sacrificial army here. This is just to push him back to give the Malay time to breathe. Reinforcements streaming non-stop. You'd think they're Karambits the speed they reinforce in. Exit, yeah, exactly. Rome is just one of those cities that's like... I have a few favorite cities that I like to go to. Rome to me is like uh, the European New York City. There's just always something. There's always something behind some... Oh! <laughs> Speaking of always something, the Hafnitsas land the coolest attack round on four moving Lechai. That was pretty badass. Oh my goodness. Oh, Valis. Oh, Valis. You need to retreat. You need to retreat. And you need to build something better than Commander and Crossbows. Ooh, the Malay. The Malay is sideswiping here, but where's he going? What's he going to do? Oh, he's going after the Siege Workshop. Bunch of onagers inside. But what the hell? At this point, our goth needs to attack the building. Remember, they come with a progressive building attack bonus. Only plus four? I thought it was higher. Maybe I'm thinking of the Husk Girl. Yeah, the Husk Girl is plus six. You know what? Commanderan might not do too terribly against these uh, elephants. The Malay are missing the last two armor upgrades. But uh-oh. Uh-oh. The Red Swarm is here. The castle desperately trying to destroy. Its HP is falling. 3,000 HP. Orange reminding Blue. Hey, Mr. Saracen, you've got some trebs. Might want to bring them forward. Leichai are back. Oh my god. Somebody give this guy a relic. Somebody give this guy a relic. Atlas! Yeah, long time. Has it? Let's hope it uh, triples again next time you're here, and next time you're here is, like, next week. That'll be fun. Our Saracen, I wonder how many kills on these Arbalest. 143! I mean, I don't see a monk. I don't see their HP going up. They're just survivors. Holy moly, 151 kills. That's three kills per Arbalest. Not exactly something you see. Valus traps a Leichai who just wants to escape. How many crossbows does he have? 42, 45 kills for them. But look at that. Team West has been dislodged. Our Armenian is mixing in some pikemen. Uh, why is he mixing in pikemen? He's an Imperial. He is getting iron casting as well, so he'll catch up eventually. Does do any teams have trade going on, by the way? 54 gold for you. Oh, that's potentially very problematic. Team East has no trade happening. So they might take fight after fight after fight, but in the long run, you need trade in Rage Forest. Lithuanians get caught in a choke point. Armor ignoring, be damned. Oh, our Lithuanian brought his little army here. How adorable is that? He is going Kana Tiero. Oh, by the way, does he have ferreters? That would apply to Kana Tiero or just Militia Line? No, it applies to all infantry except the uh, except, uh, Spearman Line units, right? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. No, he doesn't have ferreters yet. With ferreters, these condottieri will jump up to uh, 110 HP. That's pretty badass for a condottiero. John Yang. My brother from Inadamada. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad everyone can join us on this Friday evening. Or Saturday morning or Friday afternoon. Wherever you're from. Oh, he's got to get rid of these half meats as he's doing a good job. The late are just having their way here. How many are left? Only four. Ooh, and eventually the late do ultimately die. There's a lot of arbalests here. Saracen Castle is almost up. At this point, if you're seeing late chai, might as well go Mameluke. trying to bust their way in. I really want our Armenian to get fer uh, ferreters. I really want to see these uh, these Condottiero with uh, or rather Condottieri with uh, 110 HP. 
Uh, all of a sudden trade. No, trade is up here. Oh, it's getting pushed into though. Trade is getting dangerously pushed into. I'm doing well, John. Thanks. Yourself? I'm just enjoying the insanity that is this game so far. My yellow says delete your freaking wall. I thought the goth was going to die. Our Armenian looked dead. But now he's back with uh, going up to, what? what is that, 50 army supply? Oh, he's canceling units. Why is he canceling units? What is Teal going to do? Is he researching something? Is he building a castle? Buying resources? What's he doing? We've got some Persian light cab. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Look at this gothic spam. Look at the insanity that is perfusion and conscription for the goths. I mean, this is ridiculous. Look at the halberdier count. 170 halberdiers. Somebody is 100% slinging red. <laughs> There's no question in my mind. And they are reclaiming the gothic homeland inch by inch, tile by tile. Oh, I know, John. I'm listening with headphones, too, and that's all I hear. And then when I edit my videos, sometimes I don't hear it. I'm thinking, whoa. Where are all the groans and moans? Bohemian. Halberdiers might actually stand a decent chance against Leichai. They do 25% more bonus damage, so their attack bonus is 40 against the cavalry. But, no, Leichai don't give a shit. Oh, he's down to plus two? <gasps> Our Lithuanian has lost his monasteries? What happened to the Lithuanian relics? Why is the Leichai back to plus two? Our Saracen. Raul. Welcome, welcome. I'm happy to see some uh, old names here amongst the new ones. Happy to see all kinds of names. If you're watching this, if you're hearing, come say hello. We are a friendly bunch. It's still early, so I haven't, uh, haven't whipped out any Nicolas Cage references. We haven't started talking about pizza and dominoes and shit. Oh, this is not going to go well for these uh, gothic uh, units. Although, not, not that he gives a shit. He's got 150 of them. Fighting in choke points. <laughs> you are under attack. Is that from... Uh, I think that's from StarCraft, no? Your base is under attack. Oh, Domino's is the best. Domino's is just the absolute best. Don't tell my wife, but after uh, last stream, I uh, when we were talking about all the pizza and stuff, I, I just had to order something. I had to order myself a Domino's. Oh. John, during one of my videos? Maybe I had the actual game open, because when I have the game open... What is happening here? What are these Bohemian pikemen doing here, trying to clear out this Armenian infrastructure? Sometimes when I have Capture Age open, I also uh, uh, leave the game running with its sound, so you can hear that. Ascarls, they want to have a bone to pick with this villager, they kill him. And all of a sudden, without Armenian support, or rather not Armenian, without Lithuanian support, the Northeastern Front is collapsing. The Leitri are all down here. Now they're back up to plus five. Oh, it was in real life. Dear Lord. John Carlson. Hello, hello. Army supply team East is ahead about 100, but 163. Half of their freaking army supply is shitty gothic halberdiers. Armenian condottiero. Tell me you've got ferreters. Come on, man. Come on, Turs. Sell some of your 4,000 wood and get ferreters. I want to see 110 HP condottiero. Why am I seeing Red attacking? What is Red attacking here? Oh, he's up here. His halberdiers are tinkle, tinkle, tinkling away at a house. Ooh, they're deleting their trade. They want to reroute their trade cards. They cannot risk it falling into the hands of the Gothic Malay combo. Tenchi's here too. Nice. 
Okay, we are about to see some kind of engage. It must be funny for Valus, our Persian, to see a bunch of elephants heading his way. But again, without the armor upgrades, even basic bitch crossbows like this are going to be pretty damn powerful at stopping that push. Let's see what's going on here. Our Italian finally here with some gunpowder. Holy moly, it's taken a while. But the sleepy Swede has woken up. And he wants revenge. Does he know he's got Bombard's building in here? Maybe he's waiting for these uh, Bohemian units to get out of here. Those Saracen skirmishers probably not really posing that much of a threat. Okay, I like that he's going after the siege workshops first. Great move out of him. And now the Lithuanian has pivoted back north, but there's way too much goth. Oh yeah, John, I'm very happy with the uh, with the rate of growth. I'm very happy that people are enjoying this. Who, who's kidding who? Forget the channel for a second. I'm happy people are enjoying. And having fun. With the games, with the cast, with the commentary. Sometimes I veer off topic and then I'm wondering to myself, do, do people really give a shit about Nicolas Cage? People really care about my pizza experiences during school. <laughs> What's happening here? Oh, look at that. They're cleaning up the offensive back home. It looks like our Persian has managed to sneak in. Ooh, but then down they go. And now it looks like Team East has trade going. What's their payload? 90. That's a lot better than 50. Although, is it still 50? Now it's, yeah, still 54. And look at this. Our Italian base has been saved. There's just a bit of Bohemian infrastructure that needs clearing out. Palisades are still up. Not too sure why I looked at that direction. But our Gothic base still remains under Persian-Lithuanian-Armenian occupation. Yeah, long live Age of Empires. Thanos, it says all gunpowder units. So I don't think it applies to... Bombard Towers? Because otherwise they they would have they would have made it uh, s they would have said though right I think if I'm not mistaken somebody in the chat who knows if you know let 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 us know oh by the way look at this our Italian base is safe lots and lots of room for infrastructure and they are pushing out even more we're an hour and eleven minutes into this. Who the hell is winning this game? I still have no clue. I mean, look at the scores. The scores are less than 1% apart. There's Ferriters! I missed it! But our Armenian has Condottieri with 110 HP. Needs to get Blast Furnace. Okay, he is 15 seconds away from Blast Furnace. Oh no, they're picking off the Hafnitzas. I'm trying to remember the Italian. Now I, now I have it stuck in my brain. Yeah, I think it's just units. Is a Bombard Tower technically defined as a unit? Uh... Oh, I wish I could look that up. It's really, really bothering me. I don't, I... I don't know if a Bombard Tower is technically a unit. Jeez, <laughs> man, it's an instrument. <laughs> oh, man. Is a hot dog a sandwich? I re no, I, I, Thanos, I really do wonder. It's just kind of like little things that always make me... Uh, they make me question because if, if it is, it's a massive discount on uh, to, to get. Our Saracen, 85 kills. Where the hell are your freaking Mamelukes? Where's your uh, counterweight siege? 
and look at this team east is pushing back to the north team west is pushing back to the south the scores oh they're widening they're widening they're about three or four percent bigger now uh oh Kirchhoff tells us they are not a unit. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I don't know why it was sticking in my brain that it, it is a unit. But it is good to know it is not. So yeah, they don't get the discount, I guess, on those. Cereal is soup. Interesting. That is a very good question. Cheeseburger is most definitely not a salad. Maybe it is a salad. These are very, uh, very powerful philosophical questions for a Friday night Age of Empires stream. <laughs> oh, Apollina. Thanks for these wonderful casts. Appreciate all you do. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. And I appreciate you uh, joining and watching the live stream. Never mind, scrap that. I read now on the AoE wiki, despite not being a unit, the Bombard Tower is usually listed among gunpowder type units. I mean, that is a very qualified statement. It's usually listed gunpowder type units. Yeah, Thanos, my brain, my brain went to the uh, Dumb and Dumber Jim Carrey. So you're saying there's a chance? Wow, Paulina, again, thank you so much. So I still don't know what the answer is when it comes to the uh, Bombard Tower. Yeah, exactly. Our Persian has enough wood to train... Uh, how many... Uh, 110 crossbows right now? Our Saracen... Uh, our Saracen has decided to just go Arbalest. Counterintuitively, petards, demo ships, flaming camels are not classified as gunpowder units. As suicide units. Dear Lord. Age of Empires, get your shit together. Way too many unit types. Way too many unit classes. And now the standoff continues. Now we've got Italian. Remember, these guys have Pavice. So their armor is going to be a lot better than the Saracen Arbalest. Canutiero, do retreat. And look at that. The Gothic base still has not been reconquered. And now our Italian is being pushed back. Now there's Bohemian Bombard Towers here. <laughs> oh, flattened by the Hafnitzas. 67 kills. Only four friendly fire is a fantastic ratio. Yeah, the scores are widening, widening ever in Team East's favor. I'm sorry, Hexit. But it does look like Team East is going to somehow slowly recapture the Gothic homeland. And if Team East wins, I blame Valus. Why is our Persian going Commander and Crossbows against the Goths? Joseph, you like the Bohemian Bomber Towers? These guys? I like the vineyards. Or the vines, rather. What about the Italian ones? The Italian ones are pretty, too. They've got a lot more cannons sticking out. The Italian's going for the uh, the hexagon shape. Compared to just... I guess, never mind. I guess there's two on each side. Look at that Age of Empires uh, equality among Bombard Towers. For the Battle of Arbalest here. Now our Armenian is throwing in not champions, but two-handed swordsmen. No one is researching anything. <gasps> Elite Mameluke. Elite Mameluke for a Saracen at the 1 hour 22 minute mark of the game. Army supplies 100 more army for Team East. But again, that's all in halberd ears. Team West has more civilian population, more economic power. Their trade has been up longer, even though it's uh, a lot shittier. Actually, maybe not now. 96? Now that they've reconquered... Now that they've reclaimed Rome. 
from the barbarian horde <laughs> yeah some bombards are born more equal than others to uh borrow a quote from the pig himself wow hex said i am sorry but team east has taken this so they reclaimed the gothic homeland with it the trade which had to be rerouted here i guess an hour and 23 minute i mean this is a little disappointing don't, don't get me wrong you go, <laughs> you, you go to your corner and cry think about your life decisions uh don't get me wrong anytime you see commander and it's anytime you see unique technologies it's always fun in the game but I feel like Commander N is more of like a, you know, it's like the Magyar Hassar uh, upgrade that made, that makes them cost only food. It, it, it turns units into trash so that you can have trash when you don't have resources. Why did he open with Commander N is what I'm wondering. And then the Saracen Arbalests, how many kills at the end of the day? 89 for 44, so two kills a piece. And our Armenian didn't even manage to get his two-handers into champions. A turn of Vitrix. <laughs> yeah, it, it fell. And, and, and of all funny things, it fell to the Goths. Of all things. And the Saracens. <laughs> oh, man. That was a fun game. Let's take a look at the stats. After an hour and 23 minutes, there must be... There must be some uh, some good. First of all, let's see if red was being slung. Holy shit! I don't think we've ever seen this. A hundred and twenty thousand resources. This is why our goth managed to uh, to survive, basically. Wow, a hundred and twenty thousand. Our Saracen. No wonder our Saracen didn't go Mamelukes. He didn't have the freaking resources for it. He sent them all to the goth. The Bohemian, the Malay, all of them feeding the, that gothic war machine. Holy moly. And, oh, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm the idiot. Maybe I'm being too critical of our Persian, who ultimately gets 2,300 kills. More than the next two highest ones combined. The next one is the Lithuanian. It's funny that the two highest kills are on the losing team. And yet they still lost. Wow. That was an epic first game. We didn't see any Persian battle elephants. We didn't see any Persian Savars. We saw a bunch of crossbows. 60 wood crossbows. But at the end of the day, the gunpowder push here to the south was pretty cool to see. Bombard Tower versus Bombard. Cheaper Bombard Cannon versus Haufnitze. I mean, yeah. <laughs> He did have a hundred. I remember that uh, 170 army with the uh, even more being trained. Wow, that was a lot of fun. That was game number one. I have an order I want to go in. Don't ask me why. Because I want to see. I want to see Ganji, and I want to see Valis. So any game with Ganji and Valis should prove to be uh, pretty fun. They knocked the Armenian on his ass very, very early. And he was going Condottiero. And I wonder if Composite Bowman would have been a better option for him. Let's see. Green, Teal. So now you guys are Team South. All right. Let's see what we're working with in game number two. We've got Valis this time as the Burgundians. In his pocket, the Ode Meister as the Sicilians in Teal. In the other pocket, if I can click, is Gan. Oh, so they're on the, they're on the same team. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Valis's team on this one. Although you know what, Chaos Nolo, Samero, Jamjack, they're not, they're not bad players. Spanish in blue, Mongols. Oh my God, Mongols, Spanish, all on the same side. Opposite the Mongols, we've got the Romans. Okay. Sticking around to deal with the cons. They are chaos to win. Tatars in gray. Samero as the Burmese. And rounding out, we've got the Teutons. So Teutons taking on Burgundians. Should be fun to watch. Let's see some Paladin Wars. We've got super duper cheaper Paladin techs versus chunky Paladins. And then we've got Mongols against Romans. 
Okay. This map, by the way, unlike the map we just saw, is absolutely atrocious. On the west, we've got two avenues of attack, which unfortunately for Red, he's going to have to cover on his own. You know, he's got a yellow scout, which is why he's moving forward. So the name of the game for Red here is to try to distract as much as possible. Why are you attacking the boar with your scout? Okay, they're trying to lame Valis just like they did last game. Although I don't know if they, they were the same players last game. Valis is ha always having his resources stolen. Amazing. But this is really ugly. Poor Red, whose primary gold is an ugly, ugly placement for that primary gold. Yeah, Teutons are... I mean, Teutons are always fun to watch. I love the Teutons. They're one of my top three, I think, civs. Okay, so Red, I, is he going to have enough villagers to kill these, uh, these boars? I don't know. To the east, we've got an even uglier situation. One, two... Three avenues of attack. Yeah, that is a very painful, very painful. Sorry, I'm trying. I'm trying to look at the. Uh, trying to imagine no honor among poor thieves. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine what's going to happen with this lake, and whether or not there's going to be shenanigans. And then if that wasn't enough, if these two ugly, ugly wall-offs aren't enough, if these three aren't enough, then you've got this in the center leading into a Y-shaped opening to the Team North. And by the way, these teams are very isolated. You've got red and yellow on one side. Look how far away they are. Holy moly. Look how far away they are from each other. And then you've got these two on this side. Whereas Team South... Is a bit more evenly distributed. Wow. What an ugly, ugly spawn for Team North. Especially this. This is just gross. It's a lot more open than the last one. A lot more spaces for... Nonsense. By the way, yeah, he did get the two borders. Okay. Yellow is taking the lake. Green is walling this part off. Okay, so Green wants nothing to do with this. He's just going to wall this off until probably, what, the 25-minute mark of the game? 25-30? Yellow, red, green, and teal. Yellow, red, green, and teal. Yeah, that's why I was uh, in the beginning. I was confused. I thought maybe we would get to see Team West again. But no, I, I really feel bad for Team North. I mean, they're they're close to one another, red and yellow. I mean, this isn't really close, but it's close-ish. And then this is just really, really annoying. Ooh, and by the way, Blue has managed to sneak in a villager behind enemy lines. Ganji, our Spaniard. What are you going to do with this villager? Let's keep an eye on her. <laughs> Kylar being chased by a wolf and a Roman citizen who tries to block. Oh, he's trying to block the boars. This is amazing. Oh, now he's attacking the boars. Now Orange is attacking the boar. So he lost control of one boar. That was sour. The Roman is now behind enemy lines as well, been building a barracks. They haven't seen it. Oh, not the. Oh, it looks. No, the... never mind. Wait a second. That's a wolf, right? That was the wolf. Yeah, I think that was the wolf. Three dead boars. Blue, our Spaniard, continues to walk around. I mean, what, what, what is Ganji hoping to find here? Oh, he's going to find nothing but death. Oh, he doesn't notice. Takes one attack. Takes a second attack. Why is he not reacting? Okay, he's reacting. He's going to... Pen in the uh, pen in the wolf. There you go. One, two, three. <laughs> Why did I ever doubt him? <gasps> Look at this gauntlet of wolves. One on the left, one on the right. Let's see it. Okay, so he's building. Okay, he's keeping himself safe here. So he's exploiting the natural distance between these two players, between the two pockets, 
inserting a barracks. I was wondering why he was randomly walking around. Roman Mongol villagers are duking it out as our Roman pulls in a board as well. Atlas, was that his uh, teammate's boar? I thought it was the opposition boar. I thought it was Purple's boar. Or are you talking about the, uh, somewhere else on the map? Now green is trying to bust into here. Where did this red villager cross into enemy territory from? Is it this gate? No. How did he get in here? Last time I saw him, he was over here. Oh, yeah. It's going to absolutely mess with them. And <laughs> he's... <laughs> okay, he's in feudal. Our Spaniard is in feudal. His militia is attacking a wolf. Archery range as well. I wonder if he's going to try to just lame as much as possible. Not too sure what this villager thinks she's doing, although maybe actually, you know what? She might win. Oh my God, she wins. <laughs> not uh, not the best day for our Mongol. I'm going to put uh, put to put it lightly. Is this completed? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Not exactly the cleanest of starts here for Kylar. Losing that third boar. Losing that man-at-arms upgrades non-existent and losing the man-at-arms of all things to a villager. Yeah, Atlas, I thought it was the uh, the enemy. I also thought it was a, a, a teammate at first because they were moving in tandem. And then I realized, oh man, what is with these Roman units? All of a sudden taking down units that are supposed to be stronger than they are. Militia, where are you going? Villager, what are you building? Yanji has taken the lake over here. So let's see what's going on around the map. A random wall here as a red is villager who I still have no idea how he got into here is trying to break out of his green confinement. Green wants nothing to do with red and so is now building more and more of a wall off. Why is our Burgundian doing that? Uh, Where is our Burgundian? 30 villagers. He is in feudal age. Oh, he's a uh, hundred food away from going up to the next stage. Now Gray is being abused here on the western flank of his settlement, so he wants nothing to do with that. So everyone's kind of just walling themselves themselves off from one another. <gasps> the wolf killed the villager, that hero villager who killed. This wolf has two kills? <laughs> what is going on in this game? What the actual hell is going on? Yeah, Hexit. Uh, <laughs> you can still see his body. What is this? I wish I knew what that second... Does it tell you if it's an economic kill But for the wolf? Look at that. It even tells you that it's an economic. So two villagers. Blue is pinging over here saying, LOL, guys, check this out. I'm going to uh, F the Burmese up a little bit here. Might want to be careful not to get too close to the town center, but our Burmese... Correct me if I'm wrong. Do they not... Uh... Do Burmese mounted units not come with an attack bonus against the archers? Why did I think that the, that they that they do? Melee monk. Or am I thinking of a, a different civilization? Oh man. Oh man, Team South is just messing with Team North now. They've got archers inside the Roman base, although the Roman has killed a good amount of mongol units as well a def offensive tower rather being attacked by the roman slowly being repaired actually yeah the persian night light night line units do but i thought the burmese do as well and then the uh, savar has even more hmm or am I thinking of uh, Ma the Manipur caval the Manipur uh, cavalry upgrade that they can get? I must be thinking of Manipur cavalry. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Apologies for that. I thought it came automatically for a second, but no, it's uh, it's that upgrade that they man the Burmese got reworked. 
which is now I think a castle age. I think it's like, oh man, the, the Burmese always confuse me. In any event, let's see what's going on. We've got the Mongol now pushing in with foot archers. His tower safe at 100% of its HP. Romans desperately trying. Remember, they do everything 5% faster. Also, a Roman dock here. It looks like it tried to lame. The barracks is still up. Another Roman dock over here. Jamjack is just stealing resources left, right, and center. We'll see if his tower goes up. Yeah, it does go up. Garrison villagers, garrison villagers. A second Mongol tower going up as well. We've got a Burmese knight attacking the Spanish infrastructure as our Spaniard focuses his resources on clearing out this lake. And our Burmese has placed a whole bunch of infrastructure here. Oh, he's teefing a relic from behind enemy lines. Remember, the Burmese see all the relics at the start of the game. Wait, why is... What is happening? Oh, I guess because the map is unexplored. You, uh, you see the relics. Shuitang, you are just in time. I hope it notified on Discord. I th it should. I set that alert up. But you are in time for game number two, which uh, is starting to heat up. Why? Am I, like, going crazy? Should these not be lit up when I look at the Burmese perspective? Because they see all the relics on the map. Discord notification worked? Okay, perfect. Okay, Nolo Artudin is taking the gold. I love that he's mining the riskier part of the gold. The one closer to the enemy first. Instead of the one here, although this one is going to be harder to mine with a uh, farm there. So maybe I'm making too big of a deal of it. We've got run random spearmen behind that wall. And our Mongols continuing his uh, tower push. I think... I, that's what I thought. I thought it's because it's a revealed... But as I said, there's some civilizations in this game that uh, my mind just... I don't want to say, like, refuses to remember it. <laughs> but the Burmese is one of them, especially since they got reworked a few patches ago. I, it just, it, it's... It, some reason, I, I just can never remember the specifics. Like, I thought their mounted units came with an attack bonus against archers when it's just their uh, unique technology. Oh, yes, Myra, thank you so much for reminding me. I am absolutely terrible at this kind of stuff. If you are here watching, listening, lurking in the background, do please hit that like button. Help me out with that YouTube algorithm. Oh, and look at Red. Look at Red trying to wall off these teammates. Travis Pickle, thank you for joining. And thank you for commenting. They really desperately want to get to these villagers, but, I mean, you've got a monk, right? Yeah, just bring the monk. Bring the mangonel. You don't need to worry about this. Our Spaniard has brought forth the classic Spanish cavalry archer. As his boats now patrol. John Carlson, I see you lurking. Mr. Winky Face. Our Tatars bring their cav archers, too. I don't think they come with an attack bonus against ships, do they? No, not at all. Ooh, but the conkies are here. Let's see some conks and donks, as everyone likes to say. Somehow. Our Tatar has... Uh, how is he sneaking units behind here? <gasps> he built stables. It's through here. Oh, my goodness. Did Ganji not see this? Why is he give ceded control of this to the enemy? That's why there's a whole bunch of Tatar units running in absolute muck around the Mongol base. And look at our Mongol. Oh, no. He is running away. Valis, our Burgundian, is in Imperial. He is doing what? Going gunpowder? Let's see some paladins. Saturated lake. How many fishing ships? 28. Not terrible. Not great. Ooh, they gotta knock this gate down. They want to pass through their Valis. What is he doing? He's getting guilds. Now our Sicilians going up to Imperial. 
Okay, it looks like one of the Mongol towers has fallen. He's building a town center. He's making himself at home. Teefing some of that stone. But the Tatar is here. Ooh, if the Tatar just saw this. If he saw that there's a town center being built here, maybe the orange villager will catch it. No, she walks right by it. He definitely would have sent his cav archers forward. Random Sicilian light cavalry unit here as well. Okay. Oh. Oh, I thought this was a great tower. Never mind. This is a uh This is a Spanish tower. <laughs> Team North is getting uh Team North is getting taken to Bound Town right now, even though the scores say uh, there's not that much of a difference. Travis, I do have X. I think it's just a cast of empires. I'm not as active on X as I probably should be. I'm trying to be as active on as many platforms as possible, but man, is it hard for someone who's not uh, used to this kind of stuff. They are clearing out the Tatar infrastructure, which by the way, I mean, this is Ganji's starting town center, right? Or was it this one? Doesn't matter, there's a town center here. Placing your archery ranges right here is pretty ballsy. That is a pretty ballsy move out of chaos. Spearman attacks a wall. He will, uh, he'll be about a thousand years old before he knocks any portion of that wall down. Burgundian gunpowder is trying to bust its way in here so that the Sicilian light cap can move in. This infrastructure is still here. This infrastructure is about to fall. Ooh, collapse animation is always so fun in Age of Empires. And let's see what's going on elsewhere. As our Mongol continues teefing stone, our Mongol... Oh, you thought he would go Cav Archers? You thought he'd go Step Lancers? Oh, well, you would be absolutely wrong. He's going Crossbows at the moment, is Kylar, as he teefs even more stone. But I think Orange, Orange must see this now with the Mangonel. No, he still doesn't see the Town Center. Gets the Villager. He sees them retreat. Now he sees the Town Center. Now they know they've got to do something about this. Mangonel, Mangonel lurking. Speaking of lurking, dum 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 dum. It ca takes chaos to win. <laughs> I wonder if that's why he chose that name. Ooh, we've got a bit of a cavalry battle here. Conquistadors are absolutely getting wrecked. But Odemeister's light cap are helping out. But our Tatar has picked off the most expensive units, most of them. So now we can abscond, get the hell out of here. No reinforcements. Oh, they're going to go into a corner. They're going to be so annoying. Oh, and they're, <laughs> they're going after the Conquistadors. Oh, this is so annoying. Chaos is getting about as much juice out of these lemons as he possibly can. <laughs> the famous Mongolian crossbowman. And, and, there we go. The Flat Earthers are dying. Their bodies hanging over the edge of Flat Earth. Oh, look at the fishing industry for yellow. Our Burmese has been knocked down. All of his fishing ships are huddled. Scared. Teutonic Knights. Are you out of your tree, Teutonic Knights? Against gunpowder units. But if they can close, they can pack a punch. Does he have Hauberk yet on these Cavaliers? No, he does not. Oh, crenellations, crenellations, 95, 96, 7, 8, 9, 10. It does complete, and now the bombards aren't safe. Crenellations is an absolute badass upgrade. Not a single bombard cannon is safe with that 13 range. Even if you have siege engineers, that uh, Teutonic Castle will absolutely get you. Unfortunately, it completes a little bit too late. Our Tudin only 270 stone. Now he's being pounded by the Sicilian to the center. He's pinging over here. Things are looking very bad for Team North. And like I said, look at our... Uh, look at the travel distances between these two bases. They're isolated. Orange, by the way. What the hell is Jamjack doing? Our Roman is just not being given an opportunity to develop his economy. His settlement. He's got 52 villagers. 
This is the lowest in the game. Now the Mongol is busted in. Exit. I hope we see more of those, but I, I, we may not. <laughs> yeah, map generation was absolutely not nice to Team North at all. My, the second I, that left my mouth, I knew the the, the, the pounded would uh would cause trouble. There's your hauberk, eight pierce armor, but we've got a ram by. 14 attack needs chemistry to round it up to 15. Hearing a bunch of wallolos going down. And our Spaniard is back with annoying conquistadors. His infrastructure is at least being cleared out. But Cav Archer's on the low ground. Oh no. A fancy footwork here out of Ganji. As he gives up the high ground, runs away. Where is he going to run to? There's a lot of space for him to run. He's got his own wall. He deletes a section. So he's trying to get the hell out of here with these conquistadors. Mongol drops a big fat castle right in the face of the Roman. Man, the Roman has just been absolutely crippled, handicapped this entire game. He's taken a, a crowbar to the knee from the very beginning. And our Tatar, he's trying to help, but he's not really being very helpful. That being said, it's very hard to be helpful when the uh, the entire map is being overrun by conquistadors. So let's see how much he can actually provide our Roman getting a castle up as well. Do they have silk armor yet, these guys? Let's see. No, I don't. I don't think so. Actually, no, I don't think so. The silk armor for the Tatars apply to their cav archers. I think so. Okay, you know what? Maybe the Roman Tatar combo is going to push back our Mongol getting uh, murder holes. A man after my own heart. Let's see what's going on. We've got a whole bunch of Burgundian gunpowder. Now remember, the Burgundian gunpowder in a bonus that I think belongs to the boat should probably properly belong to the Bohemians. Their gunpowder units do 25% more damage, which is why you see Bombard 40 plus 10. And then the hand cannon here, if I can actually click on it, will be 17 plus 4, I believe. Oh my god, just click on one. 17 plus 4. I don't know why the Burgundians get this. I think it belongs to the Bohemians. Oh, Myra, that's definitely going to happen. Oh, you you want me to, like, criticize you? <laughs> I don't know why I said criticize. You want me to cast you uh, while you're all here? Yeah, that'll be fun. Speaking of fun, a whole bunch of sergeants with their ridiculous 7-8 armor are moving forward. A few Teutonic halberdiers, even with that extra... Ooh, <laughs> even with the extra armor, are going to melt, but the Arambi are not going to melt. I really want to see. Holy shit, 56 Arambi finally fully upgraded. Let's see if they absolutely slaughter these sergeants. Oh yeah, Shretang, that's a good point. It, it, it'll be way too OP. Ah, Travis, you're only 400 elo, that's fine. I mean, I don't know what the average elo of any uh, of any of us is, to be honest. I don't even know what my elo is. Who's kidding who? Here we go, let's see it. I want to see these Arambi in action. I always want to see Arambi in action. Red, stop walling this in! Let the Arambi have their way with this Sicilian army. Ballas is mixing in a few elite skirmishers. Now, the Arambi suffers from the same defect that the Ratha suffers from. Look at these armor classes. It's an archer, it's cavalry, and it's cavalry archer. So basically the same shit as the Ratha. The only difference is it doesn't cost about a billion resources to upgrade these guys like it does with the Ratha. Oh yeah, we're all gonna be, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do, I'll make a, like a... I'll ask people to write their elos and then maybe we can even out the teams and make things, uh... Make things even for the community games. Blue, by the way, sees all the trade, which is pretty funny. Mongolian castle is still up. Everyone is finally in Imperial. Roman siege is out. They're still trading from this one... 
from this one market. That makes no sense. Delete the house. A Roman needs to delete this house. These uh, trade carts are in jeopardy here. They're entering castle firing range. <laughs> yeah, guys, I, I don't think you need to worry too much about Elo. A Rambi, a Rambi. Oh, looks like we missed the slaughter here. Gondrons are up. Does anyone have a way to reach them? Yeah, we've got some Bombard from our Teutons. Who has Ironclad. So these guys come with six melee armor. Which is pretty cool. But oh god, Sicilian Cavaliers are raiding. How many kills on them? Ten villagers so far. Uh, walls being demolished here. There's a lot of donjons, but there's not a lot of space here. So they're not gonna last very long if these bombards are allowed to survive, but they're not really... <laughs> the bombards aren't lasting very long either. Yeah, guys, don't worry about Elos. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Look at this. What the hell is happening? Team North is pushing back. Did our Tatar? Where is our Tatar, by the way? And what the hell does he have? Our Tatar is four Keshiks and 20. Okay. So he's in the center of the map taking on the Spaniard. Presto. Who's brought Conquistadors. Seven Pierce armor for these heavy Cav archers. Okay. So nobody wants to engage into anyone here. Villagers need to be pulled off to repair. Oh no, this is a lot of clumped green. It's a lot of clumped green. Oh, but yellow hesitates. He hesitates and loses a whole bunch of a ram by for it. If you're going to dive, you might as well dive. Do not second guess yourself. Roman has cleared up his base. He's got two Tatar castles flanking one of his own, but what is he doing? He can't just he can't just build trebs. He's going skirmishers, okay. So Romans Roman skirmishers, I guess? Okay. Ballas with that Burgundian gunpowder is demolishing, running through the Teuton base, who still has not managed to get up a castle. Drill for our Mongol, nomad for our Mongol. How many siege units? He doesn't have a single siege unit. <laughs> Why is he getting drill? Why is he getting his siege to work uh, move 50% faster? Does he even have a siege workshop? Yeah, he's building two of them. Why the hell is he getting? He doesn't have the he doesn't have the resources for siege. Okay, he's getting onager and siege engineers. Okay, you know what? Maybe I'm the idiot. Where the hell did he come up with those resources? Mangadai? Fully upgraded. A Roman has some uh, Keshek support, also fully upgraded. Trade is running free here. A Roman needs to pivot though. He's got to. He's got to move towards these uh, Mangadai. But here we go. Heavy cab archers are moving forward. Oh, another attempted at pancake here. Sicilian. Oh, what was that? Did Yellow just delete all his Arambi? Did he actually just delete his... Uh, oh, no, yeah, he resigned. Oh, no. Samero is gone. Nolo is gone. I don't like when players do that. And that's it. Oh, and I guess the game disconnected. We don't even have an end ending screen. That's sour. Although it looks like our Tatar is the last one left. <laughs> so not too much of a, of a wild guess as to who wins this game. Wow. Okay, well, Team South did end up winning the game. I think Team North was a little screwed in the map generation. Oh, I, I don't like when games end like this on uh, on a disconnect. You think he was flattened? I think he deleted them. Let's see. Although, yeah, you know what? Maybe the Siege Honager did manage to get a shot off. A uh, few of them did. So the, the here we go. The fiery balls are coming. No, he deletes them before... I mean, even if he didn't delete them, those those shots would have destroyed that army. Wow. Well, that was very sour for Team North. 
<laughs> what a messy map. Usually these me messy maps always lead to these messy games. I'm happy for the Roman that he managed to push this back. Who's kidding who? He was under siege for a long, long time. And then this one has Vinchester in it too, right? Yeah, okay. Let's uh we'll we'll end it on uh on this game tonight. Oh, very cool. It gave you a uh, pet cemetery vibes. Oh, welcome, welcome. Oh, I am gonna say your name. I... Madhu Maduban? Maduban? I'm glad you could catch us live. The quantum thinker also shyly shows his eyeballs. <laughs> Hexit, you were right. Team South won. Let's see. Purple, green. Ugh, now, you, now you're going to be Team Northwest. Versus Team Southeast. Let's see who we've got playing. We've got Vinchester as the Incas, which means everyone Oprah style starts with a free llama. We've got the Warrior, also from the Sal's clan as the Malians in yellow in the other pocket. FedEx as the Goths. And Turs from game number one is back this time as the Bengalis. I always like to see the Bengalis. They are taking on the Burgundians by Toin Toin. From the Fox Clan, the two bushes tell me we are seeing the Gurjaras. And oh, look at that. Look at that poor rhino with his big gut. His big gut. As he lies dead there. Ganji as the Gurjaras in blue in the other pocket. We've got Nolo this time as the Britons. And rounding out, we've got Aztec by Samero in teal. Hexit, you're for Team Northwest now. Okay. So let's see, we've got the we've got a Mezzo War here as the Incas on the left take on the Aztecs to the right. And in the south, we've got the Bengalis, the Elephants versus the yet again Burgundians. Orange is already pinging here. Why? Maybe he wants uh, some kind of infrastructure. Maybe he sees some kind of enemy unit behind that I'm not that I'm missing. Something's attacking something. Oh, it's over here. Okay. <laughs> Thanos, thank you so much for joining. Have a fantastic night. Shwetang is betting 10 tacos on Team Northwest. Maduban is also, is going... Oh, okay. He's going Team South. Southwest. There is no Team Southwest. <laughs> Hexit betting his usual schmeckles. That he won last game. Let's take a look at the map, because again, this is a really messy one. One avenue of attack to the north, but that's misleading because there's this big, fat corridor going diagonally across the entire map. Yikes. So we'll see how the players decide to wall this off to the south. We have two avenues of attack, the one of which is being fought over. Green's villagers are ping-ponging back and forth. Top to bottom, top to bottom. <laughs> southeast, okay. So we've got two votes for Team Northwest, one for Southeast. What Wests are playing again? <laughs> well, he's got to be careful. So Turz is just going to basically waste uh, about as much wood as he can. Someone is pinging over here, Orange, saying, hey, somebody take these Rhinos. And now we've got a situation. I mean, you're fighting so hard to bust into here gray all you really have to do is take your villagers this way and look at this look at that a whole big empty space with this big oh <gasps> oh my god oh my god ganji is going for a six rhino pull this is incredible finally finally what i wanted to see this entire time i mean uh, among other things that i wanted to see who's getting who Travis is also going for Team Southeast. John is going for Northwest. So we've got three for Northwest, two for Southeast. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see it. How many villagers does he have here trying to get rid of that uh, swamp tree, the mangrove? Okay, he's brought them in. What's he going to do with them? What the hell is he going to do with them? 
One down. Two down. Three down. Four down. Five down. Five down. Five down. Six down. Three of them perfectly placed underneath the town center. What an absolute epic, epic pull there out of our Gurjara, who really doesn't need food. At least not initially with the two bushes underneath the town center. But that was epic. <laughs> Big gray wrinkly asses. By the way, behind all of this, he managed to wall in a gator. A crocodile. That was pretty badass. That was pretty freaking crazy. Six rhinos is pretty damn crazy. Please make the rhino noise. <laughs> what the hell is the rhino noise? One sec, let me zoom in. No, that's a diamond. I'm doing a donkey noise. <laughs> Myra going team southeast. So now we've got uh now we've got three and three. Yeah, Raul, you best believe that's gonna be a short. That pull from Ganji was a, definitely a short. And it was so smooth. That's the best part of it. His villager took a little bit of dam damage initially. Oh, and look at that. Now he's helping his teammate out. And now there's a crocodile involved. But that was a, such a smooth pull. What team am I rooting for? Ooh, that's a good question. I think that I am going to be rooting for the team with the Britons. I'm going to be going Team Southeast. Wow, that was an amazing pull. I mean, not, this one is good too. Three, don't get me wrong, is always good. Ganji, look at, look at the pal that Ganji is after he got his free 2,000 food. He's going to be an Imperial agent in the next three minutes with this much food. Oh, the depths. Yes, you did. <laughs> you joined and immediately you saw it. <laughs> oh, you went because of the Burgundians. <laughs> Is Toronto in the east of Canada? I think Toronto's like central Canada. Or maybe it's in the east, like the southeast. All right, so some cool shit happening already. Uh, and again, why is he trying to bust into here when this is all open? He can attack purple if he wants. He can attack yellow if he wants. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Why is he wasting his time attacking a palisade here? Especially with two scouts just perving out and looking at him from across the fence. Our Aztec is being pushed into, but he is placing two towers. Okay. What's a stone count? A little bit more stone, and he'll be able to place a third. Travis, you went for blue. The Gurjara. I mean, after that, after that amazing pull, it's very hard not to root for Ganji. That was absolutely epic. It is Southeast Canada, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. I just always like to see Britons. You don't see them very often, but I it's surprisingly because the sieves are always random. So they have about a 1 in 45 chance of being... Or actually, 8 in 45 chance of being picked, but you almost rarely see them. And now they're in the pocket, which means I'm hoping Nolo blesses us with about 100 longbows. Even though more realistically, probably going to see... Uh, eh, probably going to see Arbalests if we get to that stage. You're watching while playing the game. Ooh, what sim are you playing? Reverie is going for the Goth and the Inca. Okay. So I think that's four votes for Northwest, three for Southeast. Unless that uh, I'm completely mistaken. The ma <laughs> Spirit of the Cast. That's hilarious. That's funny. I do math a lot in my videos. But nowhere near as close and complex and uh, comprehensive as uh, Spirit of the Law does. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere close. Here we go, our Britain. One town center to the north, one town center to the south. Our Gurjara with all that meat. One, two, three, and he's not done yet. Ganji is on a mission to kill every single animal on the planet and consume its flesh as he rushes to go up to the next stage. Let's see Gurjara elephants taking on Bengali elephants. That'll be fun. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. 
Oh, I have, guys, you don't have to. I, I don't. Ex I don't expect anyone to, uh, to to just sit and and listen to me ramble on. I hope you guys all win your games. I hope that you do not have happen to you what happened to this Incan Tower right now. And yes, as Shwetang says, yes, please do join our Discord. We will have some community games. Our Inca is a long way from home. Forget Spider-Man. He is just floating units down this. And again, this corridor. I knew it was going to be trouble. I freaking knew it was going to be trouble. The last thing our Burgundian expected was to have somebody from over here attacking him all the way down here. <laughs> Vinchester pulling a bunch of weird moves here. Camel takes the high ground. Archer takes the high ground over him. Well, Quantum, that's exactly why I chose the Team Southeast, because everyone's first love is the longbow. Always. No one wants to go melee face-to-face -face when they're starting out the game. Everyone wants to be nice and safe. Attack your opponent from as far as you can. Maybe trap them in a pen like this, like, like a bunch of dogs. And then wait for yourself to get a mangonel. Uh, he's in castles. Or maybe convert them. Man, but they want out. Leopard, LOL. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining and commenting. Yeah, Rage Force is awesome. Leopard, did you catch the six rhino pull? From our Gurjara. That was freaking epic. Yeah, our Burgundian's in a bit of trouble. He is in a spot of trouble here. He has managed to stop the attack. And now there's... <laughs> now there's a Manganel in here as well. <sighs> okay, finally they begin walling off this annoying corridor. As our Aztec... Not really doing much beyond those first two towers. Relying on our Britain to move forward. Scout attacking a wall segment. Okay. Good luck to you. Archer's hiding behind a monastery. It looks like he converted one of the men at arms who then killed the others. Yeah, monks to the rescue here to the south. Absolutely. I appreciate that, Leopard. Ooh, a shalotl. Everyone's... I know everyone's love is the longbow. I, that's why every time I see the Britons, I really want to see that longbow. Although for now, we are seeing Britain siege, which is not... Uh, not the strongest in the game. Maruban, your first love is the latest. Yeah, you like the Lithuanians, huh? Yeah. Do you like the uh, the composite bowmen of the Armenians because it ignores armor too? Spirit of the Laws videos are, I think, yeah, I, th I don't think they're meant for like new players. If I if I had to put it like that, probably for more experienced players. Although it is pretty damn helpful if you got the time and the effort, not the effort, the energy rather, to sit down. And kind of memorize what he said. You'll have an encyclopedic knowledge. By the way, speaking of encyclopedic knowledge, holy moly. Our Bengali is here. With those ridiculous three armored monks. Does lose one of his mangoes though. Our Inca is still here by the way. Now he's pinging over here. Why? Scouts trying to blind the Bengali a little bit. Oh man, our Burgundian is in a lot of trouble. What is blue? What is Ganji doing behind this? Is Ganji going a little bit too far into the eco? Second highest villager count in the game. I mean, his light cavalry right now, he's got five of them, could absolutely overwhelm this. Even these feudal age ar archers are not going to do too much. Now he's got six. Okay. Let's see it. Come save your teammate here to the south. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. Let's see it. Who will react first? Will the monks? Oh, look at that. Our Burgundian is distracting. They're gonna... Oh, these monks are gonna die in about five seconds here. I don't think they'll even get... Oh, they get two conversions. Three conversions. That is sour. Four, actually. That is very sour. Isn't it hilarious that it's our Burgundian who lost most of the light cavalry units? And I was gonna go after the mangonels. On the whole, not a terrible trade. You're trading out trash food for a whole bunch of gold. Orange pinging over here. What is Orange doing, by the way? What is our goth planning here? A very neat and orderly set of houses are being placed for him. Our Britain, any forward castle, any hope of a longbow, not yet. Our Burgundian, by the way, expanding. Our Britain will be an Imperial second after Orange. And it is our Aztec. I mean, a Britain-Aztec combo should do pretty damn well. Who's kidding who? That's a lot of powerful siege monks, ranged units. And that's it. Ganji saves his teammates' butt for the moment. But the two converted light cav are still here. They are running through town center fire a gauntlet of villagers. One of them remains 18 HP. Where is he going? He's just going to explore what's going on. Our Malian looks like a stream. Oh no, never mind. I thought this was units. It is a stream of houses. Malians will do well against the Britons. All of their infantry comes with extra pierce armor, I think. Starting in feudal castle, then imperial. So they're going to be tough to take down, but infantry will die to the Aztecs. And there is our Britain castle. <laughs> I do like uh, winged hussars. My favorite winged hussars is the pole, though, with the uh, Lakitic legacy. And look at that, our Burgundian is safe and sound. Our Gurjar is going chakrams. And he's going to be an Imperial in 50 seconds. Okay. So Ganji will be second to Imperial on his team after having killed every single animal on this uh, map. Anarchy for the Goth. Where are his barracks? Okay, he's building barracks here. He needs perfusion, he needs conscription, and then we are ready to see the spam resume once again. Wings of should get extra range since they use a latest. What's a latest? Okay, there's Perfusion. I'm assuming he got, uh... Conscri no, Conscription's right behind it. Okay, so these barracks are gonna absolutely pump out a huge number of units. Unfortunately, they're gonna be pumping out infantry. And infantry facing off against Chakram Throwers. Which need to be elite ASAP so they get that infantry plus one bonus. Right now, they are not elite. And there they are! There they are, the longbows are coming. The longbows are coming. Our goth is here. He's added a few of his own barracks to try to stop these longbows, but little does he know he is facing off against the Aztecs. But I'm assuming we're gonna go Jaguar Warrior. Yep, yeah, yeah, he is. So we are shaping up for a bunch of fun bipedal armies actually you know what no, no one has got cavalry in this game that's amazing elite husk girl for you champion for our malian oh my god malian champions with that seven pierce armor six pierce armor it should be seven no or or even more oh that's gonna be very hard for these longbows to deal with they are not elite our Briton is investing in the infantry upgrades. He's got three castles here in the forward position, but the Malian just swarms over this. Very hard to take down a Malian champion with six pierce armor with your longbow. But the Jaguars are here. The paddles start a paddling. Oh, nice. Edelweiss. You came from a three hour. Oh, geez, Louise. Did you win? <laughs> Ashalot likes his girls, yeah. <laughs> G 
great shrimp. Hey, how are you? You're playing against the Malians right now? Well, don't go ranged units unless you've got an Aztec partner here who's absolutely slaughtering these Malian champions. But now there's enough longbows, actually. They're still just basic, not elite. Crocodile chases this husk girl. Uh-oh, bad news for you. And here we go. This is why it's going to be very problematic for the goth to push into this. Because now they're elite. Now they come with a plus one infantry attack. Ooh, spamming about 5,000 Hussars. What Civ were you playing? Tenchi, we are seeing the Elephantos. I thought we were not going to see any cavalry. But then I remembered we've got Bengali. And now he's going to chase away. Not too sure why they're running away. I guess he's uh, kind of done his push for now. What is our Burgundian up to? Our Burgundian is still in Castle Age. He's got the resources to go Imperial. Uh, I guess maybe choosing not to. Maybe choosing to wait. Not too sure why he's choosing to wait. Get those Paladins out. Start fighting. Oh, and here we go. We're going to see the melting of the Goth. Oh, <laughs> that's so gross. That's so gross. All of that infantry, they got one attack off against the Chakrams. And now the, the Halberdiers want a piece of it too. Oh my god. Oh, that's so gross. That is disgusting. Okay. Britain Castle is down, but he's got 28 longbows, 24 champions. And he's got a whole bunch of Aztec infantry with him. By the way, our Aztec has converted three Huskarls. So they've now joined Team Aztec Britain. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You can't see it, but a whole bunch of Huskarls just melted behind those elephants. Oh, the good old Persians. Nice. One siege elephant. Oh, he dies. Silly, silly halberdiers. I mean... I don't think you've got any kind of relevant attack bonus here, right? Camel, zero. Cavalry, zero. Eagle Warrior, of course. And now a random Gurjara. Hassar. Speaking of Hassar spams, let's see a Gurjara Hassar spam with Kshatriyas. And that ridiculous 25% discount. Longbows are attacking the barracks. Probably better left for these champions, no? I want to see a lot of infantry die to these Chakrams. Not because I'm... I mean, I said from the beginning I'm Team Southeast in this game just because of the Britons. Pikes for our Bengali. So these guys are going to attack 20% faster. Which I'm surprised he waited until now to get. But I just want to see a whole bunch of infantry die to Chakrams. You're going to have to lead with the elephants. But that's going to make it slow and exposed to these onagers. And there we go. Our Burgundian is going paladins. Ooh, Ink and Eagle Warriors with 10. Okay, not yet. I guess he doesn't have, uh, what is it? Fabric shields. So we've got the battle of the infantry with crazy pierce armor versus the infantry attacking bonus sieve and backed up by the longbows who only have 22 kills, no surprise there. What an absolute mess. But it looks like the Aztec, with the Britain's support, is absolutely slaughtering everything here. And that Malian Pierce Armor is not going to help you. What is the uh, Jaguar bonus now, 11 or 10? Infantry 11. Chakrams. Oh, they're lining up for you. No, never mind. Now they're lining up for you. Our Burgundian's still a minute away. Yeoman for our Briton. Let's see that range. Is he on elite longbow yet? Yes, he is. So now he's going to be fully capped out. 12 freaking range. Say goodbye to your onagers. Say goodbye to your trebs. Purple is pinging over here. Why? He wants his markets up, I guess. Ooh, look at how the Chakrams clump. These bombards here to the left need to attack the Chakrams. Oh, they go after the BBC. They... Oh! <laughs> In the blink of an eye. 
It's insane for a unit that attacks on a six, but that pass through damage is just ridiculous. Our Britain still sticking to just the 29 longbows. You know what? I'll take it. And by the way, Yeoman also makes their keeps attack. I think it adds plus two attack to their keeps. So these guys attack on a 17. Let's see how many conversions up for the Aztec. 33 conversions. Chakrams need to be careful. I mean, the elephants are kind of lining up for this. But now there's staggered formation, which is amazing for them. Oh, they're moving in a the line. They're moving in a line. Oh, what a missed opportunity there. Edelweiss, by the way, I don't know if you caught the six rhino pull that Ganji did in the beginning of the game. And now the Bengali is just going to spiral out of control. This is 48 freaking elephants. Elephant archers. Now the Gujara have some pretty good elephant archers, too, if I'm not mistaken. Although our Gujara is choosing to go the route of Edelweiss and just spam the Hussars all the, all the live long day. And spamming he does their behind enemy lines. Oh, they're everywhere all of a sudden. Slowly but surely this Briton keep slash Aztec monk slash Jaguar warrior push. Oh, you're going to want to watch it. It was one of the cleanest pulls that we've ever seen. And it was with six boars. Uh, not boars, rhinos, rather. All right, what are the upgrades on these? Uh... Okay, they are fully upgraded. Chakrams, Chakrams, oh my goodness. They're going to need something a bit more powerful. I, I, I don't know if the Burgundian Paladin is going to be even enough right now. They are missing bloodlines. And these are... Oh, yeah. I don't think this is going to be enough to stop the Bengali army. This is how much HP. 11,000 HP of Elephant Archer. <laughs> what the... What the actual F are you going to do with Chakram Throwers and weak as shit Paladins against 11,000 HP? I guess we'll find out. Team Southeast at the moment has this game firmly in hand. They're ahead about 20% in score. Jaguars... Taken out, trying to take out some skirmishers. They die in tandem. But look at this. Warwolf Trebs. Yeoman Keeps. Longbows. This is a lot of arrow fire. Even the Malians with their extra pierce armor. Are they finally fully upgraded, by the way? Yes, they are. And eight pierce armor are going to have trouble dealing with this. The only thing I can see problematic for this push from our Bengali is there's not a lot of heavy hitters here to take down structures. There's one Treb and one Bombard Cannon. That's not going to do very well. You need to clean this up fast. You need a lot more Trebs. You need a lot more Bombard Cannons. You need to be doing what the Briton is doing. Look at this. 11 Trebuchets. Richard, hello. You are joining right as even more Briton keeps are being plopped down. Oh, Noor, sorry, I, I missed your message. Hello, hello. Welcome. Thanks for uh, joining us and saying hi. Apologies for missing your uh, your message earlier. <laughs> Denji, you're right. It is one trap for each tower. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, my God. He's going up to 25. That is about as ridiculous as we've seen. How many kills, by the way? 80 kills on these elephants who are still at 11,000 HP. Again, I don't think Burgundian... I don't think Burgundian Paladins are the way to go against so much chunkiness. Newer, you saw the... Uh... Is it Nur or Nurali? Nur Ali Islam Zuar. I hope I'm saying your name right. I apologize. You saw the boar, the, the pull of the rhinos. Wasn't that amazing? Absolutely amazing. 
Ooh, your mom. Yeah, it's a nice turnout tonight. People like seeing the Britons here. 50 longbows. Oh, you know what my thumbnail is going to be for this video. Oh, oh, they're so pretty to watch. I'm in shock that no one is abusing this, by the way. Except now our Burgundian is. Richard, you missed the first two. Unfortunately, this is the last one for the night. And in come the Shrivamshas. That's definitely one way of trying to deal with these elephants. But are they elite? Oh, I didn't click on them before they all died. Where are they? I'm clicking on the freaking Hassar. Man, my clicking skills are terrible. Holy moly. They're elite. So they dodge seven arrows. 11,000 HP is still 11,000 of HP. Elephants are just ugh, ridiculous. You know what else is ridiculous? What the hell is this? 45 by the way take a look at the hp you see here on the monk 100 hp this is a fully upgraded aztec monk what the hell is going on here team southeast is just absolutely steamrolling oh well, that being said to the south I mean, again, it's. I'm gonna say the same thing. It's problematic. They don't have any. They've got three trebs. Three trebs are not gonna do anything. They're they're gonna take down the structure very slowly. As long as blue and gray can hold on here, this is the real push. This is what really matters. Oh, now he's starting to pick off villagers. Oh, that is so sour. Look at the freaking range of that longbow. How many kills? 160 kills. <laughs> oh, those monks would absolutely be useful in the south. Can you imagine 45 Aztec monks descending on this army? Travis, you did call it. You did call it. Thanks, Myra. I appreciate it. Have a fantastic night. <laughs> Richard is fine. You're like, you're like Gandalf. Whenever you join is exactly when you were meant to join. Oh, no. No, the trade route. The trade route. How much is uh, each sack worth here? 122 gold. Down the toilet with each of these trade carts. Now the castle here is down. The castle that was here, I think. Yeah, there it is. Is down as well. So our Burgundian for the second time in this game looks to be in a very dire situation. Taking out infrastructure here while they continue their push inwards. <gasps> onagers, 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 onagers. Oh, but the monks disperse like a fart in a room. Oh, no. <laughs> Even a siege onager is not enough to kill a freaking Aztec monk. How insane is that? Why did you retreat? Why did yellow retreat there? Wow. Those were said. I mean, that's definitely one way to deal with monks. 100 HP monks is ridiculous. The Bengali continues to push in. Now he's inside Ganji's base. Ganji building an emergency castle, trying to keep his trade safe, rerouting the trade to the south of his base. And now the Chakrams are enough. The Chakram Halberdier combo is uh, Hassar combo seems to be enough. Oh my goodness, are they Terminator monks? I mean, if a Siege Onager can't kill you, 75 attack plus one, so 76 attack, and you've got 100 HP. See, one Onager shot, and he still has 24 HP left. That is just freaking ridiculous. Where the hell did this yak come from? Where the hell? Oh no, the eagles! The eagles! 
they're gonna chase they don't give a shit about the longbow they are now with fabric shield they have 10 pierce armor which means the longbow does one one hp of damage to this eagle but enough volume is all it takes <laughs> eagles are coming Oh, the Shravamshas are moving in. There's a lot of them. Delete your own houses. You don't need these two houses blocking you. Oh, is he pushing this back? Oh, Travis, did, who, who snuck infrastructure? What am I missing? Elephant HP has been knocked down to a meager 7,000. The Shravamshas, the Shravamshas aren't moving. Why are they stuck? Did he resign? No. What happened here? Did they see Medusa and then get frozen in stone? What the hell happened there? But ultimately, HP does win out. <laughs> Shravamshas. By the way, does anyone in the chat know what the Shravamshas attack with? It's like a short spear. Kind of like a spade, almost. Oh, they need to. It's a new bug. Man, oh man. There are so many new bugs in this version, which was meant to fix all the bugs. I mean, this is just freaking ridiculous. 56 Aztec monks. They don't even need to convert them. Uh, the Jaguars are absolutely going to demolish these. Look at how little the damage they're doing to the Jaguars. Although I guess numbers ultimately do win out the day. Samero must be microing the shit out of these units. Longbows are sniping the Onagers. Fantastic. What an amazing... I said in the beginning, Aztec and Britain is such a powerful synergy here. Nothing can come close to this army. Absolutely nothing can come close to this. Chakrams are doing their darndest. We finally have some basic onagers. Richard, there was a new upgrade a few days ago, maybe three days ago, that upgraded the... Uh, all these little weird fix... little uh, glitches that were present in the game. Like your your you could convert your wood into food. Whoa 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 whoa. Okay, everyone who had Team Southeast, there you go. Let's see what was going on. That was epic. I mean, we got to see some cool man onager shots against these monks, but <laughs> Aztec just replenished them. Fifty nine monks, fifty three of them here. Okay, everyone, look at your screen. We're gonna we're gonna play a little game here because I'm uh, I'm exhausted and my mind is lost. How many Britain towers do you think we have here? I, I'm gonna wait till we have like five or six responses. I'm gonna say fifty five. Fifty five. How many Britain towers do you think we have on this screen? Okay, the depth said forty six. Oh, Maduban, definitely more than thirty. Definitely more than 30. 44, 47, 45. This is like the price is right. I'll bet $10. I'll bet $10 and one cent. I think 55. Richard, okay, agrees with me. Shwetang agrees with me. Thukang, okay, also. 49, 50, 30. Okay, let's do it. Are you guys ready? 57. Oh my god, Richard. 57 on the nose. Amazing. Oh, if I zoom out even more, we've got 60. Ooh, the depths. Quantum bets seven buffaloes. He is playing a different game altogether. Light years ahead of us or light years behind. <laughs> Your mom says 35. You were at half. Oh, wow. Now that was a freaking fun game. 571 helps. 63 longbows? Why do I feel like we saw a lot more longbows than that? Ready. Final kill count, 145. Final conversion count, 87. <laughs> wow. 
That is a shit ton of stone. That's uh, 7,000 stone, I think, or more. According to the wiki, the Shravamsha riders use a budge or a cot, an Indian axe knife, a dagger bladed mounted on an axe shaft. Interesting. Okay. Let's see the economies. Biggest donor, biggest recipient. So our Britain gave the most. Of course, what do you need? Uh, what do you need resources for? Yeah, I had those longbows from the beginning of the game to our Burgundian. The most kills here, only 806 by Ganji, who, in my opinion, still the MVP with that ridiculous six bore pull in the beginning of the game. <laughs> You're Indian, you don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it looks like almost like a like a short spear that they attack with, right? It looks kind of like a short spear, but I guess a blade on an axe handle is a short spear. Well, there you go. Everyone, thank you so, so much for joining. What an absolute fun game. I mean, all three were fun, but this one is uh, an amazing game to end the uh, the night on. Especially this. Uh, what the hell can what the hell can beat this combo of Aztec and Britain with sixty freaking towers behind it? Wow! What an absolute epic, epic game. Even the Malians with the extra armor, the eight Pierce armor, couldn't couldn't withstand it. Even the Goths, the Huskarls, even the ten Pierce armor Eagles of the Incans couldn't stand toe to toe with the Aztec Britain combo. And there you go. Oh, thank you so much, Maduban. Reverie, thank you so much. I appreciate all you guys joining and commenting on the videos and commenting here. Turkish Asars might have a chance with the extra armor. Maybe. Or maybe any kind of Hussar. It definitely Pole Hussar would have their way. The Pole Winged Hussar with Trample Damage would have its way with anything clumped like this. I mean, half of them would die before even reaching it, but there you go. Everyone, I appreciate it. Before you head out, do hit that like button. Help uh, help me out with, the, I guess, the algorithm. Oh, the proud dandelion. Dandelion, I'm so sorry. You just caught the end of the, the cast? <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, we'll catch you in the next one. If uh, Worst case scenario, next Friday at the exact same time. Thank you, Maduban. I appreciate it. And everyone, have yourselves a fantastic night. Thanks uh, for everyone watching and, and participating. I really do appreciate it. Have a great weekend.